Good morning and hi guys, this is Connie. Back for some more Connie Reads the Dogs of Winter. You're gonna hear Baby Bear on the floor doing her thing. Let me read, we did chapter 14 last time. So this is chapter 15, titled Sweep. I got up earlier than the rest in the mornings now. I'd slipped from beneath my bench just as the first train arrived. The rest slept huddled together for warmth. Newspapers for blankets, cardboards for mattresses, and hips and bellies and legs for pillows. And every morning, Lucky waited for me at the same spot we had met that first day. Some days he was by himself. Other days, Patches or Rip, the dog with the torn ear, waited with him. But never Little Mother and never the smoke-colored dog, although I did see him watching us. He watched us as we warmed ourselves on the grates and in the patches of sunlight. He watched as I, as I asked the people hurrying from the cold to the tall glass buildings. Please, can you spare a coin so we can eat? We watched his coat, black and silver as smoke. As I bought sausages and bread and bones from the butcher shop. I was careful to save coins for Rudy. Then we raced to the alleyway and through the opening in the wall into the dark warm of the cellar and ate like kings and queens. We'd wrestle there on the dirt floor and played tag in all the small confines of the cellar. And then we curled up together and slept. Sometimes when I woke, the smoke colored dog was there watching. I would say goodbye to the little mother and the puppies and to grandmother, the old dog who watched over the puppies. More food tomorrow, I promised. And every day, Lucky and the others would race with me through the streets and across the plaza to the heat grate across Leningradsky Station. Just at the edge of the street shadows watched the smoke-colored dog. Every night, I gave Rudy the coins I had, and he said it was not enough. No matter how much I gave him, it was not enough. Kopecks, he spat. All you bring me are stupid kopecks. And he tossed them on to the floor. Whatever I give the dogs, it's always enough, I complained to Pasha one night as the trains galloped by. They never yell at me or hit me or tell me I'm stupid. I rubbed my ear sore from another Rudy beating. Pasha shrugged. This is the way it is, Mish. It is the life we have. And that was true until the sweep. <clears throat> tweet! Tweet! I jerked my head up from my sleeping place, banging my head on the bottom of the bench. Whistles, voices, legs running this way and that. My heart sank. I must have slept past the first train. I started to scuttle out from under the bench when I heard a scream and then a voice. Okay, all you bumsies, you sewer rats, get up! More screams and thumps. Tanya's voice crying, Rudy, Rudy! I squirmed back under the bench and made myself as small as possible. Tall black boots, so shiny I could see my face in them, marched past my bench. The heels rang out like gunshots on the marble floors. Grab that kid, a voice called above me. I squeezed my eyes shut and rubbed the black button over and over. Tweet, tweet, clean the garbage out, the commanded voice attached to the tall black boots standing just inches away. Someone, perhaps Victor, perhaps Pasha cried, leave us alone, we're not hurting anybody. Smack, a head hit the ground. I saw Victor's hat fly across the dirty floor and off the platform. I rubbed the button hard. It jumped from my fingers and clattered through the heat vents. No, I cried. I jammed my fingers into the vents. What's that under there? A hand grabbed my foot and pulled. No, I screamed, jamming my fingers further into the vents and kicking as hard as I could. A grunt, a curse, uh, the hand pulled hard. Off came one famous basketball player's shoe. The hand grabbed my leg and yanked. I screamed in pain as the heat vent cut into my fingers. Mother! Mother, I cried. A cruel laugh, a laugh that sounded like him when he told me I was no bigger than a cockroach. I've got a live one under here. The tall black boots and big hands were attached to a man in a policeman's uniform. Uh, but this could not be a policeman. My mother had always said policemen helped you when you were lost. I hadn't been lost, or, and hadn't I been lost for such a long time? I opened my mouth to tell the policeman uh, this when he spat in my face. What a filthy little beggar. He threw me over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes. It's to the orphanage for you. No, I screamed. Put me down. Put me down. I pounded on his back with my fist, which only made him laugh. 
On the floor, I saw Victor holding his bloody head and Eula kicking a policeman. His baton cracked against her shoulder. The policeman carrying me turned, uh, turned and my world spun. He started up the stairs. Then something slammed into him, a whirling, kicking, punching, screaming devil. The policeman threw me from his shoulder. The side of my head cracked against the stone step. Everything went gray, then black, then gray again. I felt myself slipping, slipping, until I heard a voice cry, Run, Mishka, run! Pasha, Pasha on the steps, all in a tangle with the shiny black boots that kicked him over and over and over, screaming, Run, Mishka, run! <clears throat> I scrambled to my feet and ran, stumbling and falling up the stairs to the world above where the sun was just rising. I ran as fast as I could with just one famous baseball or basketball player shoe. Why do I want to say baseball when it says basketball? I ran as fast as I could with one famous basketball player shoe. I ran until I could no longer hear the whistles and the shouts and the screams. I ran and ran down the street and through the busy intersection and across the plaza. I was a small boy, a boy of five, running with just one shoe and a broken face and bloody fingers. I ran through an army of legs, rushing this way and that, crying, and no one, not a single person, saw me. Finally, I came to the long alley I knew so well. They would just be waking, the dogs would. The puppies would be crying for little mother's milk. Patches and Lucky would stretch and lick their others, each other's faces, wag their tails. Rip would uncurl himself from grandmother. Perhaps smoke would be there. I stumbled to the back of the building and pushed aside the weeds. They would be happy to see me. Here with the pack, I would be safe from the tall black boots and the cruel hands. Lucky, I called through the opening in the bricks. It's me. I dropped into the park pocket of darkness. No warm nose pressed into my palm and searched my pockets for food. Nothing stirred. I heard a whimper. I thought, the puppies. And then I realized the whimper had come from me. There was nothing else in the cellar but the dark and the sound of my heartbeat. The pack was gone. This book just gets sadder and sadder. And that's the end of chapter uh, 15. Be careful with that and enjoy, please and thank you. And since the chapter 16 is only one page, probably gonna see this posted right after this one or later on today. Bye.